and nothing. <laughs> 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 Are we live? Who knows? Who knows? I don't see us live. I don't see us live, but we'll just have to trust yeah. it, hopefully. Let me check. Let's click on the Made Brave page. LinkedIn people, if, if 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 we are live and you can see us, someone pop a comment in, let us know. <laughs> Please reach out. Help us out. Yeah. Help us out. Help us out a little bit. Drop us something. Drop us something. Let us know. Have we gone live? That way. Usually it comes up. Oh, there's Keenan. Oh, there's Keenan. Oh, there we are, Mr. Gotham. How's it going? We are live. Tim, thank you. All right. Mr. Hughes. <laughs> no, I just need to try and okay. find it on my phone and LinkedIn. Where are yeah. we? I can't find us either. <laughs> hey ho! It's all right. Well, we'll let's, give we'll a couple of minutes for oh. people to come in. So thanks for joining us, everyone that's coming in so I've far. Got us. I've got us live. Oh, you found it. I found it as well. There we are. We've got twenty-five I've people got so it. far. Twenty-six. Hey, good. Hello, number twenty-six. Do you have a name? <laughs> 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 we are live. Tim and keeping us right. Lucy's here. Nice to see you all. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Jen. Good, Hi, good. Lee. Cool. We're right. just going to give everyone a little chance to come in. Let Craig get settled. <laughs> oh, <laughs> We're just testing out the link to live for the Absolutely. first time. So we're usually over on Zoom for this. Don't know how everyone else has been getting on the Zoom, but it's a nice little change. It kind of feels like you're you're in a, in a new room in the house <laughs> over here <laughs> on Streamyard. Cool. Good. We've got a full house almost. That's brilliant. Oh, I've lost us again. I can't find it. <laughs> I'm here. It's all right. I'm not even looking at my phone. You're, you're, in, you're, you're, room, on. you're in this room. I'm you're here. On. It's all right. All right. <laughs> Well, let's cool, just Rich. kick off then now that we've got so many people joining us. Thank you so much for coming on to this live LinkedIn. This is so exciting. Um, this is the first time that the Made Brave and Creative Entrepreneurs Club combo have done one like this. And we are delighted that uh, Craig Black has joined us for this session. So those of you who don't know me, my name is Rachel Brown and I'm the Chief Exec here at Creative Entrepreneurs Club. And I just want to give you a quick overview of why we're doing this. Um, and what we're hoping to cover. So basically, Craig is an inspirational, Scottish-based, independent designer, lettering artist, and typographer. So why would we not want to speak to him? These sessions are a lot of, all about joining in, being inspired by creatives around us, and seeing how we can add to our own toolkit, hear some of their stories, and see some of their work. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand you over to my buddy, Andrew Dobie. Cool. Thanks, Rach. Hi, everyone. Welcome, Craig. Um, Hello, so, yeah, no, thanks. Hi, hi. <laughs> I keep, I keep thinking. Uh, I, I, I've got the, like, the worst internet connection. Um, I'm out in the, in the middle of the country for everyone uh, watching um, out in uh, the south side of Glasgow, and and I, I don't have the grace of fiber broadband yet for some reason. So, um, if my if I go kind of glitchy, I apologise. Um, but thanks, <laughs> thanks for joining. Um, this is kind of the second in our new series of live streams in partnership with Made Brave, um, which is our brand agency based out of Glasgow and uh, Creative Entrepreneurs Club um, that Rachel runs. Uh, so I'm Andrew, I'm the founder of Made Brave. Um, and you know, for those that haven't sort of followed us over the last couple of wee, couple of wee while, that's, that's my, my, <laughs> my good grammar. <laughs> uh, essentially, um, over the last while, since the whole COVID thing happened, uh, Rachel and myself joined forces. Um, and I suppose we're kind of um, started to sort of look to kind of support and help the creative industry just now. Um, so if you're you're obviously on linkedin so on, if you're on linkedin just now just if you have a check um, and you search for creative industry covid support group and um, just up in your um, tab up the top here we've created a, a support group for people in the creative industries and um, there's a whole lot of people sharing jobs uh, sharing support pointing people in the direction of loans and grants and such like and um, then rachel and her team at creative entrepreneurs club very kindly gifted their platform um, which you can find at creativeentrepreneursclub.co.uk and over on that 
platform and um, we have a job board um, and people are posting jobs to creative jobs so if you're looking for a job if you need work have a little, little check over there or if you have work that you would like to give to some lovely creative people please pop those jobs on over there and um, there's also um, a service for free one-to-one -one support so if you're struggling in any way, shape, or form, um, jump on over there. You can book a session with myself, you can book a session with Craig, you can book a session with Rachel, and a whole host of other lovely people that are just there to try and give a little bit of their time just now and try and support you in any way they can. So if you're trying to figure out what the next stage in your journey is, if you're struggling with something just now, or you just need a listening ear, jump over. If we can help, we can. It's really simple and it's um, completely free and you can book some time out um, with those people as well. So previously, we've run a few sessions, um, a few different kind of webinars over on Zoom interviewing sort of different business people, people um, that we felt that could support and add a little bit of value and knowledge to you guys just now. Um, you can check out some of those previous webinars if you go and again check on the creativeentrepreneursclub.co.uk website or you can jump over to the Made Brave YouTube channel and we've uploaded those for you again today. We'll also be um, reposting uh, Craig's chat today and um, following this on those both those places. So if you're not able to join for the whole session, don't worry, you can jump in and out or you can jump back on and we'll share that with you as well. So, you know, creativity is something that's really um, important to me. It's something that's really important to the Made Brave team, to the Creative Entrepreneurs Club team. And we felt at this time, you know, you know, this this kind of one long day that we're in for the last three months, um, we, we very much need some creative inspiration. And, you know, sometimes when, when you listen to creative people or, you know, we, we, you listen to someone's story, there can sometimes be something in that story that just sends you off in a different direction or that just sort of turns your day upside down and, and sends you sends you down that different path. So, you know, I've known Craig for a, a while. He's a very inspiring person. And I've uh, had a great chance to work with Craig on a number of projects uh, in the past. And so we wanted to get Craig on to tell his story because he's got a very inspirational story um, and he's a very talented person. So, um, uh, yeah, I'll pass you over to Rachel who will give you a little bit more about Craig before we let him finally talk for himself. <laughs> <laughs> This is also the longest introduction. <laughs> build up like his big three days up. <laughs> a lot of pressure here. <laughs> so those of you who are just joining us, because this is a LinkedIn Live, so you can jump in and jump out whenever you want to. And um, we're doing a quick interview here with Craig Black, who is a Scottish-based independent designer, lettering artist, and typographer. Having spent the first few years of his career in leading design agencies in London. Craig currently runs his own design studio in Gurick in Scotland. Craig is well known for bespoke and innovative innovative typographic illustrations, mate. Typographic visual identity illustrations. <laughs> <laughs> Packaging, murals, installations and everything else in between. Um, Craig's work has been celebrated and published internationally by Computer Arts, Creative Review and IDN magazine. His work has also been exhibited across the globe from London to Barcelona to Australia and Dubai. And he's known across the public speaking circuit for sharing his inspiring story, conferences and creative events around the world. If that wasn't enough, Craig <laughs> is also the co-founder and creative director of Creative Inverclyde a social enterprise aimed at utilising the creative sector to be the nucleus for positive social change across Inverclyde in Scotland. So welcome, Craig. Yay! <laughs> There's a lot of pressure. Like, you, what There's a lot of pressure there. Uh, this is a big build up, Craig. Don't let us I know, down. <laughs> I know. Well, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Um, so yeah, thanks. No. Great. No, thanks for thanks for joining us. Now, um, you know, as I mentioned, we obviously know each other, but for for those who don't, you know, how how do you describe what you do now and you know who you are? So yes, I'm a, an independent designer, lettering artist, and typographer. Um, so my work kind of spans between branding, packaging, installations, murals, artwork, typefaces, basically anything to do with typography and lettering. I kind of play about with, um, and I work with all sorts of clients and brands from all across the world and um, which is fantastic um and also like doing the whole public speaking thing is is been a massive part of my career and especially in the past few years it's led me to australia and america as well and this year i was supposed to go all over europe and the world but unfortunately covid kicked in and i'm stuck here back in europe um but yeah, and I'm also uh, the creative director and co-founder of Creative Inverclyde as well, which is something very special to me, and I'll, I'll talk about that more later on. 
but yeah, that's the kind of condensed version of me and what I do. Yeah, and can you you take us a little back, um, sort of Craig, just from that kind of journey then, from kind of being employed to you know now, I suppose being a a, a sort of independent creative now and kind of running your own studio. Can you kind of yeah. talk through that um, transition? There's obviously a lot of people just now that might be in that transition that might have been kind of almost forced into it in terms of they may have lost their job or they're just mm-hmm. trying to figure that out. And I, I suppose it'd be quite nice to hear some of the the wisdom that that you've learned in that transition mm-hmm. and and let everyone know a little bit about that story. Well, just to give you like a further insight into who I am, like before the world of design and creativity, I used to be a professional football player. So I had no idea what design was all along. But what fascinated me about football was the typography on the back of football tops, badges and stuff like that. And I always played a part of my kind of my life. So after I decided to leave football, um, part of that time is I studied art and design in high school. And I was not bad at drawing. Um, so I always thought that was gonna going to be a fallback for me. And then I remember a, a brief encounter with my old art teacher um, who basically persuaded me to go in and do a graphic design course, even though I had no idea what graphic design was. First time I went to study and it was at Cardano College, which is renamed something now, I can't remember. Um, I instantly fell in love with design. Like it was just love at first sight. I, and I, I still got that same love now. And then I think from when I graduated in 2013, um, I knew as soon as I graduated, I wanted to become an independent designer specializing in typography and lettering. Like this, that was like a burning desire for me and something that I set out from a very, very early stage. And not many people have that and that's totally cool. Um, But for me that I know what I wanted to do and I knew I had to work towards that. So I moved to the Bright Lights of London in 2013 and I ended up working for a few big agencies down there just to get like the kind of experience of working in design teams, um, Mm -hmm. bigger projects, how how it all works basically. And but on the evenings and weekends, I was consistently practicing on my typography and lettering. I was doing personal project after personal project for about two years, two and a half years. Like no one knew who I was. Like literally, like I was just practicing and practicing. But what I was doing though was I was slowly getting my work out on social media, sending it to blog. It's people started to associate associate Craig Black with typography, and that's what my game plan was. So when anyone thinks of typography and lettering, I want them to think of Craig Black. Now, mm-hmm. not in a kind of sadistic kind of way, but <laughs> it's in a more business sense of like yeah. when any agency or brand is thinking about doing some sort of kind of work in that field, then they think of me, and that's the idea. So after about two and a half years in the agencies, I started to pick up more freelance work. And what happened was I was combining a full-time job and more or less a full-time kind of independent career business on the same time. And combining those two was just hard work and troublesome. Like there's not enough hours under the sun. I was burning myself out and I was making myself Mm -hmm. miserable. But I knew that my burning desire was to go out on my own. Um, And I always remember when that time that I decided to go out as an independent designer, like on paper, I really shouldn't have done it because one, they they really say you should have at least six to 10 years experience working at agencies before going on your own. That's like what people say. I only had two and a half years. I only had one month's um, rent available to me in my bank account um, to keep me going. I didn't have any clients. I had nothing at all, but I had this real self-belief that I could make it work. I really, I truly believed in myself. And I literally jumped into the deep end and thought, I'm gonna, just gonna go do this and start my own business. And somehow I managed to scrape along, get a few projects here and there, and it kept me going and going and going. And I started to learn a lot about business as I went along as well. And a big thing that I, I like to share is that I am not afraid to ask him for help. Like I have pestered Andrew so many times over the years, like, how did you do this? How did you do that? And I've done it to loads and loads and loads of more experienced people in me. And I think that's important to share because a lot of people think you just know it. You don't, you, yeah. you figure things out, but it's good to ask for help. And then that, that experience like kind of progressed over the years. And I think it got to about six months or eight months in London, um, starting the business in London. And I got sick and tired of the hustle and bustle in London, to be honest. Um, at that point, I lived in a, basically it was a cabin uh, in the north of London, which is weird because it's like a housing estate, but I had this cabin, which was essentially my studio 
and my bedroom. So I was in there 24 hours a day and it wasn't healthy. And my my That's wife... Just, I, I'm in this room 24 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, different circumstances, different circumstances. But, um, my wife, my family and friends were, were back home in Scotland and I was backwards and forwards all the time. Um, but it got to the point that I just really, really missed home. I missed the way of life. I missed the culture. I missed the fresh air. It was simple mm-hmm. things like that. Like, And I remember um, it was a Christmas time. I said to my wife, right, I'll be back in three months. Um, <laughs> I, need, I need to tie up because I had all these clients in London and I, mm-hmm. I felt that was my only obligation to London at the time. And I, I really didn't enjoy it at all. Uh, but I went down. And after two or three days, I had said, I've had enough. I just booked a van, I got all my stuff, and I drove up the road to Scotland. And I remember seeing the Welcome to Scotland sign, and I started celebrating in the car. It was like a huge relief, a total weight off my shoulders. And then from then, I went back home, set my own studio, and that's now been four years. Um, I basically said, continuing on my business. And it's grown from strength to strength. And... The amazing thing about my work and what I always plan to do was have my home base, but be able to work with clients across the world from yeah. the US to Australia and, and manage to travel to these places as well. Like I've never been limited in that way. And because of the beauty of the internet and the way the, the world is going to be such kind of diverse and open for collaboration, it's just opened up so many more doors. But a big thing for me is making that happen. And I have mm-hmm. persistently connected with people and marketed myself the best I possibly can. And now that I'm in this fortunate and amazing position where, like I said, I've got my home studio and a big dream of mine was always to have a family and stuff. So having a family here and doing this business, if they have that flexibility for my family as well and providing that kind of um, lifestyle was a huge driver for me since 2013. Like it's very, very cheesy, but it's true. And and I'm now living that, living that dream. And like, I still pinch myself with some of the clients I work with now and the brands and I'm like, well done. Like, Craig, like, remember like when you were doing like logos for like 10 pound when you first started just to get something in the door, like those cheap projects now that you got to this point and you value yourself and where you've got to now, like everything happens for a reason and everything that you learn from. So it's been an amazing journey and I, I can't wait to see where I go next, to be honest. Great. So, is there, can I ask a question? We've got a question popping up, I think, but can I ask a question, Craig? Like, you're so excited. It's so exciting listening to you because you're so passionate about it. Recently, <laughs> though, things have been quite challenging. Is there a piece of work that you're like, I did that? I'm insanely proud of that. I mean, all of your work is incredible, but has there been a standout moment on that journey where you're just like, oh, I'm super proud of that? There is actually, and it's actually happened very recently, and I can't share who the client is yet, but it was my dream project. Um, If I could say football and typography, like, combined together, and it was my boyhood football boyhood (laughs) football club. I'm I'm putting in as much hints as possible, but basically I created the the brand typeface for this club, and I can't... I, can't, it's, I struggle for the word to say how much this means to me. It means so... I'm actually getting emotional. Um, it means a lot to me because it's something I grew up with. My brother, my dad, my family, like we all grew up with this. And my, all my friends as well, we all grew up with this brand. And it means so much to me. And to be part of that now for the future and what I've created for them is, is speechless. Like I remember when I went to the stadium and... I basically showcased the work that I did for them. And in that meeting, they basically signed off the work, right? I remember in the meeting because <laughs> I worked with a, another agency who'd done uh, the work to it as well, but those guys, and then there was a the marketing team at Rangers. So they essentially signed off the work and they all looked at me and I just kind of went, oh, I just kind of said that. But anyway. <laughs> uh, Oops, I, Daisy. <laughs> I celebrated, I celebrated in, the, in the kind of stadium and it was a, a special moment, but I remember getting outside. I can't believe I gave that away. I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, I was outside. <laughs> I was outside the stadium. Um, and then when I got into my car, like I was totally overwhelmed with emotion. Like I literally burst into tears because yeah. I put my heart and soul into this project. I put everything into it. And the club loved 
everything that I done and instantly fell in love with it. And to see it being used in the way and I'm like I'm desperate for the season to kick off. I'm absolutely desperate <laughs> to go and see it all. So without obviously I'm sure to the team as if it was clocked on, then you know, but I, hopefully in the next month or so I could probably discuss it. But that for me is it words can't even describe, honestly. Like I know it's a piece it's of really, tape, but it's the whole it's everything about it though. It really is. Do you know what's brilliant is hearing how unscottish you are about all of this and being really passionate and uh, uh, inspired by by hearing your story because I think mm-hmm. one of the challenges we've all got it's quite easy at the moment to feel a bit down and a bit yeah frumpy and grumpy about the world because we're all in a, in a completely uncertain time but just to listen to you about something you're really proud of and you're mm-hmm. shooting it out of the park and you're just going for it and you know letting people hear that you can achieve what you're set mm-hmm. out to do is mm-hmm. really inspirational yeah. so picking up on that because it's not mm-hmm. being business unusual um mm-hmm. and for people who have been struggling for a little while now everybody's having to pivot we're all having to do different things yeah. in new ways can you tell us a bit about what you've been doing how you've been sourcing work finding work engaging mm-hmm. with people creating stuff have you been ke- keeping going yeah yeah like when the first the kind of the pandemic happened like the first couple of weeks was a total nightmare for me personally um my wife's pregnant and she works for the nhs there was a lot of issues does she work does she not work there's a lot of stress involved obviously business issues with me because i had projects on the go and fortunately they tickled on they just kind of continued on but it was very slow and there was a total unknown area for a while mm-hmm. but the biggest thing that i i noticed was there was so much negativity in the mentality of this doom and gloom and rightfully so like i'm not just let's discredit that but i thought to myself like i need to switch this to a positive like how can i turn this negative into a positive so i started to kind of reaffirm where i want to go as a business and i started connecting with like contacts and uh, brands i've worked with before and re- re-engaging with people just to see how they're doing how they're dealing with things like and just saying the hello and in and, and a sense it's like it is networking but it's like just being genuine and building relationships that way and i think that's what people are missing out is when they think that networking is all about a sale like here's my services this is something i can do like connecting with someone and saying hello and just being engaging about their personal life as well it's just such it's even more powerful in terms of your business perspective as well so I engaged in that, and one thing that I made sure was I was continuing to work along creatively as well. Like I found a lot of inspiration in in seeing what's outside as well. Like there's something I've built on during this time. It's this kind of um, typographic collage kind of artwork which I've done, and it was all inspired by an overflowing recycle bin which I saw down the street. If that because if COVID never happened, that overflowing bin wouldn't exist. And I, <laughs> what I saw was like newspapers like ripped apart and it showed like type mesh together. And I thought, I've got an idea here. And I ran home and I built this piece of artwork, uh, which I've now used as part of projects. And it's now further led to opportunities because when I first showcased that piece of work, which was uh, an artwork I did for uh, In Good Company in Leeds, that grew arms and legs and it led to commissions and collaborations. Um, which I'm currently working on. One is I actually worked to creating a limited edition uh, shoebox artwork for a client in India. So it just shows you like the, the yeah. vast uh, kind of spread it can go. So I made sure that I was continuing to put out content um, which was of high quality and valuable to people and trying to help them out as much as possible because a lot of people have found themselves in a situation where they've either like kind of lost their job unfortunately or they found themselves like freelance and they really don't know how it all works and like they've come to me and asked for help and i can give them as much advice as possible how i stumbled along and as much as i could give you advice you're going to make mistakes no matter what and that's part of the process but it's all about embracing those mistakes and moving forward and and just engaging and making sure that you're consistent with the content that you're putting out as well like case studies do um personal projects as well like it's a great time because everyone's got a bit of downtime right now and and i'm making sure i'm using that valuable time but the other flip side of that is my wife's off as well so i'm spending more time with her because she would have been working and i'm making sure to make that balance as well like i'm not working every other under under the sun to do 
creativity and stuff like that is mm-hmm. it's being purposeful with your the hours that you use and and something that i'm doing and something i want to share as well is that i'm very um i'm very disciplined uh in in my work like i've got like notes and notes of notes of stuff this is how i do my life like that's just notes and i scribble it off every day but every single day i wake up i know exactly what i need to do my task at hand and that has been a huge benefit for me during this time because what people are telling is waking up and going, I don't know what to do today. But see, the night before, I would write a plan of saying, right, you know what, I'm going to spend an hour looking at research for, uh, and I create a mood board for our own personal project. By 12 o'clock, I'm going to start designing for this personal project. And then it, just building that up and having that structure will hugely benefit because if you make those kind of deadlines, then within the mm-hmm. week, two weeks, you have a project that you can share with your audience and that can connect with per- like potential clients and brands that you could potentially work with. So that's a lot of the kind of things that have helped me along in this time. And thankfully, like I've had inquiries like every single week, two or three a week. And that's not, I don't want to be egotistical in any way, but a huge part of that is previous to the COVID time as well is, is building that network and making sure the content is good and bring about, providing that value to people. And now, thankfully, like people and clients and brands are start, starting to think of like rebranding and, and doing this project and doing that because they're starting to have a bit more clearer heads of where their business wants to go. But you need to be on the forefront of their minds. Like I said before, typo- typography and lettering create black. And that's the mindset I'm trying to get people to think about. Yeah. And fortunately, that's starting to happen. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, there's a lot of lessons for any creative people who are kind of at the start of their journey here. And, and what Craig has said is that, you know, I, you know, I obviously speak to a lot of creative people and, you know, over this period, I've spoken to a lot who are trying to figure out their, their path into creativity. And I think, you know, to sort of reiterate Craig's point is that you need to try and find that niche of what you're known for. So when you think Made yeah. Brave, we, we work for you for everyone to know brand, 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 brand. I want Made Brave brand, Made Brave brand. So anytime someone looks for any type of branding project, Made Brave is the one they think of. And when, like Lusso, when, when, when I think Craig Black, I think lettering typography. And as you can see, what, what it very quickly does, if you're consistent with that content and that messaging, then it becomes very easy to recommend someone. So if someone came mm-hmm. to me and said, Andrew, I'm really looking for a really um, niche illustrator that it's good with typography. Well, I say Craig Black. I'm not going to. I'm not going to point at a generalist because the generalist might let my recommendation down. So mm-hmm. you know. So I think you know. That it's a great point in kind of like niching on that, but making sure that you're promoting and you're out and you're talking yeah. about it. I think you know it's often very difficult. And it, and it's um you know I suppose it's we all get nervous. We were talking about it before we came on here today. Is that you know people still we still get nervous, but like you almost need to find that courage, don't you, to be able to talk yeah. and to kind of and to and to under understand and figure out what your story. And I think Craig, that's what people have resonated with you a lot is that mm-hmm. you've got an inspiring story and you're not scared to share it mm-hmm. and, and you know we constantly see it rachel and i when we, we, we do these webinars the people that have a great story that for people to follow along and learn from tend to you know tend to kind of get going to the next show and the next one and mm-hmm. every time you do one you level up don't you and you kind of end up on something yeah. else see, um, see on that note andrew sorry to cut you off but sorry, I, that... it was something that rachel said earlier on it was very un scottish of you craig and that's something i want to put on because scottish people tend to not shout about themselves and in the sense of we've been seen as like you're kind of full of shit or you're like kind of egotistical in any way but i want to kind of personally kind of put that to bed in terms of like you should be proud of yourself i'm extremely yeah. proud of what i've achieved and the work that i do and the reason i say that is because if i can shout about my work in terms of confidence and that self-belief then that gives light on to others to do the same yeah and that's really really important like we're like Scottish creatives or weather creatives in UK or worldwide, it doesn't matter where you're from, but you should have the confidence to, to share your work and have that belief because one, I know for a fact that my work doesn't like make everyone happy, not everyone likes it, but there'll be people who do and they will gravitate, gravitate towards me and that's the yeah. way it goes. So the more that you talk about the work, it gives your, light, gives your work confidence and people to believe believe in you and that's the important thing is you believe in yourself and people can believe in you and the work will just mm-hmm. transcend from there. Brilliant, brilliant, Craig. Yeah, totally agree. Um, so I suppose, um, you know, um, we've got your kind of get to kind of pop up some of your work now, and we'll kind of have a wee kind of yeah. just a little bit of a look, let people, some people see it. I'll just share your screen, and there we are. You can all see my screen here. Magic. So this is my website, which is craigbladdesign.com. Um, 
I've just recently launched a project. I'm just going to show you this one, which is called FS Renaissance. I literally launched this about four days ago, I think. Um, so this is about two years, two and a half years in the making. Um, really, really special project. It's a collaboration with Monotype, um, which is one of the biggest type foundries in the world. Uh, and I'm hugely grateful for the opportunity to collaborate with them. But essentially what it is, um, is I created this kind of typeface in my spare time, actually, in between client projects. And it was inspired by the Renaissance period and the art culture and sculptures along that work. Specifically, um, I'll just slowly go here. Specifically, the, the type engraving into stone. Like, I, I absolutely mm -hmm. love that. And I wanted to bring a typeface to life and how Renaissance man as well, like uh, Leonardo da Vinci, who was such an absolute genius, but the amazing thing about him is that he was an absolute genius across various um, disciplines as well. He worked at such a high, high level. Um, and that really, really inspired me, especially as a, um, a designer myself and type and lettering, because I do type and lettering, but my work within branding, packaging, installation, murals, typefaces, it's all multifaceted of type of and lettering. And I try to work at that high, high level. So it was really, really inspiring to me. So this um, kind of type of graphic sculptures you can see on the screen here, were all handmade and photographed by an amazing talented photographer called Susan Castillo. She's based in Glasgow. Her yeah, work is Susan. unbelievable. I worked with a guy called Pedro Arila, who's a, an amazing type director. He basically brought the typeface to life uh, and basically made it work correctly. Um, through my work, he basically took the DNA of my work and made it look, uh, work well. And so Susan created these amazing kind of uh, images with reducers to the marketing campaign which is just fantastic. These are all created, um, it's all 3D uh, MDF laser cut. And I basically created this acrylic fusion technique on top of it to create these sculptures. And these are like smaller parts of it as well. So these are all laser cut hand painted designs, um, which are fantastic. And the response I've got from this project is just absolutely incredible. Um, I love it. And you can download it on my fonts if you want to go and get it. Um, so that's one project. Yeah, I'll show you this one, which was actually I spoke about earlier, the inspiration for the recycle bin. And <laughs> um, so I created this artwork as part of our posters for the people campaign, which is rolled out across the UK. That's Guruk, by the way, beautiful place. This is where I stay. <laughs> um, look at that for a sunny day. You wouldn't get that very often here. <laughs> um, but this was uh, they reached out to five or six um, kind of artists across the UK. Moro Mayasku, Studio Bell, Re Rebecca Strixon, Anthony Burrow, Luke Tong, Risotto Studio. And yes, this is all hand created. Oh, I've got it here actually. I don't know if you can see me as well, but here's the original. Yeah. Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a poster campaign that's rolled across the UK. It's now reached out to America and Australia, which is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really, really cool. And I'll show you one more. Uh, one of the one project that I absolutely love is the letter installation I did for this car at Off Festival in Barcelona. So we were out there, Andrew, weren't we? I was there, um, I was we drink, out there. drinking beer beside that car. <laughs> <laughs> it was very hot. So basically I hand painted this um, design onto this car as part of the three day festival in Barcelona. It was an amazing experience. I got to talk at the festival as well. Off is one of the biggest um, design festivals in Europe if not the world, I highly recommend going to it once you, once we open up again and these are things are possible. Um, so I did this over three days. Um, it was really, really hot and I got a lot of sunburn. Um, but the interaction with audience, the people coming by, talking about the work, seeing this piece of art coming to life uh, before their eyes was really, really special. Um, Maurice, the beer brand, actually said it's the most highly engaged social media content they've ever had as well which is really really incredible and i really wanted to drive the car back to scotland so but unfortunately <laughs> they wouldn't let me but this the white part of the it's actually a yellow car and um, so it's a white vinyl on top and i remember the last day i was walking away and they literally tore it off before it, i didn't even leave it they were tearing it off and i was like let me leave first like let me go um, but, uh, horrible <laughs> i know but yeah that, that's three projects from my, my website you can you can see much more of it at the very visual pieces, mural pieces. This is one I done for Made Brave um, Old Studio. 
and you can look into that. It was an amazing project to do. There's my mug there. Got yeah, amazing we, video about it. We've just moved studios and we're very sad. Yeah. We had to leave the mural behind, so we actually got Craig to come in and paint over it for a joke for a video. So that's, <laughs> that's some, somewhere online you can find that as well. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it was a brilliant project to work on. So I've got lots of different kind of projects, installation work, branding work as well. Um, like I say, typography and lettering is uh, where my focus is as well. So yeah, you can go onto my website, you can dive in uh, and just let me know what you think of it. Um, so yeah. Cool. cool. We have a question that's come in. A question, yeah. Are you yeah. going to ask the question from Kirsten? I was, yes. That's the one. So Kirsten Murray says, yeah. Craig, what is your advice for making collaborative projects successful? I, I think that's a fantastic uh, question, Kirsten. Um, the biggest thing for me is trust. Trust is a huge, huge part of it. So I'll speak about the, the recent project, the SS Renaissance. I worked with Pedro Arrila really uh, quite closely on this project. And the whole point of it was I created the, the shape of the letter forms and Illustrator first. So I created like the, not all the letter forms, most of them. And I essentially had to give that file over to Pedro and give him the trust and capabilities to take it, to bring it to life. I didn't micromanage. I, I believed in his abilities and I let him flourish. And I think that's why the project did so well. He came back to me, I think it was about four weeks later, and like Craig, he kept me updated, saying, what do you think of this letter form? And we went backwards and forwards, and it was very open, and I was giving honest feedback as well. Like, I wouldn't, if I didn't think something was right, I would say, and if I, he didn't, I didn't think something was right, he would say to me as well. But the biggest thing was trust, and then he delivered exceptional levels. And But if I, I always think about this, and I said this to Pedro uh, very recently, like, if I say to him, like, fine tune this here, fine tune that there. I don't think it would have been to the level it was at. And it's the same way I went with um, Susan with the, the photography project. So the marketing aspect of it, like I had an idea in my head. I thought of these typographic sculptures. I had some ideas of color schemes because of the letter forms and the kind of shapes and the kind of theme to each kind of sculpture. But I essentially said to Susan, like, I want you to take a creative control over this as well. Like this is very much yours as much as mine. And that's very important for you to do. So, and I think that gave um, Susan um, a much more, more um, involvement in it as well, because I've been in projects before where you see a total art direction. It's like, we want exactly this. And I think yeah. you've got to be open to other creatives, like kind of techniques and skills. Like that's why you're working with them because you believe in them. And that's why Susan delivered exceptionally well. Like I remember going to the photo shoot and I was just blown away by how it all performs. The preparation is absolutely key as well. Like, but being open and being being able to trust one another is the big thing. And I'm a big, big believer in collaboration. And even when I'm working with um, branding projects with clients in the States and stuff, like they trust in my ability and I'm going barriers to forwards with them, working, making sure that, what do you think of this? Do you think this can be improved? And all these things are really, really important. So yeah, just to reiterate all those kind of aspects, the biggest thing is trust, being open and being honest. Yeah, and just to pick up on a point you said there, Craig, I think, you know, the creative process is people often think as the creative, they have to come up with everything. Um, and, and, you know, I think, you know, ringing through to what you said there, we often find that our job, you know, when we're doing branding projects or we're working with clients, it's not it's not as about coming up with all the solutions and about pull them out of people's brains that and maybe in a way yeah. that they can't they can, um, express themselves. And, you yeah. know, perhaps we've got the skill set. And so it's that kind of balance of, of both parts, isn't it? It's, it's not just... Yeah. You know, and, and you definitely get more than some of the parts by kind of collaborating and working with others as well. So, I, you know, I truly believe that. See, and no, no, no. I remember when I, I met with the guys at Fort Smith and Monotype when I was talking about the FS Renaissance. So this was over a year and a half ago. So I went to London in their office and I came in with this idea and it was like, imagine type sculptures, massive paint mixed everywhere photographs i've got a swimming susan does these amazing photography and i just went in this wild rampage and i was just like excitement passion <laughs> and i had like i didn't know exactly where i was like going with it all but i remember it was like five of them were like total silent and then they turn around and says you know what craig i love it like we trust you go do your thing and i was like yeah. great and that was amazing for me because that gave me a huge sense of confidence as well because this is like the biggest type foundries in the world and they're basically saying to Craig, you go do your thing, we trust in you. 
and that was a huge thing for me and my confidence as well. So it works both ways as well. But it's going back to what we spoke about previously. It's having that confidence and self belief in the work that you're doing, uh, and that transcends onto other people to believe in in that kind of collaboration process. And and do you, do you think as you're as you're kind of progressing and you're getting pushed forward creatively, do you think technically you're having to you're leveling up as you go, or do you think, you know, do, do you feel still feel like you're progressing in that sense, or do you think, you know, you know, I'm just interested, you know, like, are, are you feel like getting every, pushed every day, or is it kind of every single day for me is I am constantly learning, whether it's business, whether it's design, I'm constantly pushing the boundaries of my skill set as well. Like I'm always fine tuning that, and that's something I pride myself on. Um, I, I never rest on my laurels. Like every project I deliver, I like to think it's better than the one before, and that's yep. that's for my own improvement. It's always been about me versus me. It's never against any other lettering artist or typographic artist. I always want to improve myself, and um, as a human being as well, and I improve in all that aspects as well. So, technically, yes, um, I need to make sure because. One, the more I progress in my career, if you're seeing the bigger projects or the, even the bigger clients who have got a wider audience, I need to make sure that my work is on point because if they're taking that, I've been working with a client and um, a tech client in San Francisco and I've created a word mark for them and they're a massive company and they just let, they just told me that they're opening up a new office. It's probably going to be next year in Austin, Texas. And it's going to be the biggest building in Austin, and it's going to have the 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 Walmart's going to be the biggest signage ever. And I'm like, well, I better make sure that this curve and this is on point. These vectors are on point. So when you work at things like that, you make sure that you pride yourself on that, and you're constantly improving yourself. And um, so yeah, like every single day, I'm constantly improving on that skill set. So. We've got another question from Lee Ward. Um, and Lee asks, what would you look for in a graphic design course in mind? She's new to the scene and there is a lot of courses. Yeah. Have any recommendations? So I can only speak from my own experience. And I went into Cardano College, which is, I can't remember the name, it's ridiculous. Um, but they had a very open graphic design course, which was fantastic for me because at first I didn't know getting into graphic design that I wanted to be type of lesson. I wanted to explore illustration, web design, motion, um, photography, even just to explore and see what it's all about. Because it, for me, that means I could tick off a lesson. That's not for me. That's not for me. But type as and funnily enough, there's not there wasn't a typographic or lettering course within the graphic design platform that I worked in. It all stemmed mm -hmm. from my personal project because uh, not personal, my final uni project, which was I wanted to create this kind of identity through um, lettering. So I took it on my uh, on board myself to learn type of lettering via um, Skillshare and blogs. Yeah. And writing. There's amazing typographic books you can get as well. So I do recommend going for a course and learning the fundamentals of graphic design, um, which is like fantastic. And it gave it hugely gave me a platform for even learning how to use Photoshop. And illustrator and design like i didn't know any of that before i went on that graphic design course so it has benefited me now and i still use the same skill sets that i did from then um but if you're like one be specific in type and lettering there are specific courses in that field and i, I can't i don't know if there's many and there's one in bristol as well i think it's like a more type based one there's a bit you need to google i can't remember off the top of my head but there are specific ones but to ha I would also like Shillington's a good course as well, and that's a very short, intense course as well. Um, and they do they provide an amazing platform as well. Um, but like honestly, you, you can start now. Like get books. There's amazing blogs out there. There's so many yeah. tutorials at your disposal now. Like even like compared to when I started, what which was now seven years ago. Like there's so much more now. And I like I got an iPad Pro um like for christmas and i'm struggling to use it and but i'm slowly getting there and i see so much amazing work but in the flip side i still use a pencil pencil every single day and sketch away like i still quite traditional that way and everyone's um kind of skill set is different how they work it's all about finding your own way of doing things and don't compare yourself to others um as well so if i was looking at like for me now yes i would look to see if they do typographic stuff but be open 
that's what I would say, uh, and yeah. explore different areas because you never know. You may fall in love with motion design before you fall in love with typography. So yeah, I, th I think that's it. It's that often the kind of the creative courses they tend to touch on a little bit of everything, and they're to give you a taster of everything. And you know, it's the same same with my path as well. I was a designer and a photographer, but the course I did was kind of a little bit of everything, web and everything yep. else. And and I think in these courses you find something that you're you'll gravitate towards. Um, mm -hmm. And and I think today more than ever it's good to be kind of multidisciplinary because you've heard mm -hmm. Craig, like even though Craig is, is doing typographic and lettering it touches on branding it touches on packaging yeah. it touches on traditional graphic design it, and you know and I'm sure that Craig's part of producing videos and motion graphics as well so yeah. you've kind of uh, today's world you need a little bit of everything but um, as mm -hmm. Craig says you know you, you're so lucky that in terms of it's like it's out there now with YouTube yeah. and Skillshare and all these all these platforms mm -hmm. um can I ask another, can I pick up on a question that Lucy yes. has put together then? Because you talked about, you know, as you were learning along the way, so your skill set is the creative skill set and you mm -hmm. branched out on your own and you wanted to do it on your own and you were moving that forward and bringing in clients and making connections and doing all that great stuff around your personal project. But what are your business learnings? Mm -hmm. What is the business bit that you learned along the way that has helped you keep moving forward because sometimes in the experience that i've got with creatives that tends to be the bit that people half focus on half don't mm -hmm. look necessarily to focus on it sometimes it goes mm -hmm. by the wayside because the creative process can often take over now people yep. do need to be the full package and it's good to be the yep. full package and it's great to have as much business experience and yep. learning mm -hmm. along the way so what what did you yeah. learn Craig? I think it's a fantastic question, and I'll be brutally honest, I've learned this all on my own, um, but I, right now at this stage of my career, I would say probably it's 50-50 in terms of business stuff and creative mm -hmm. stuff, probably 60-40, actually 60 business, and what I mean by business is things that have helped me out is obviously the marketing side of stuff as well, like in terms of generating business is getting your work out to design blogs, creative blogs, publications, social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, all that shebang, like being consistent with that. So every case study I've done over the years, I have tested every design blog and publication all across the world to say, please feature my work. Now, I've tested them and tested them over the years. And because of that, I've actually struck up a relationship. And now that I've contacted them though, they're more open for me to, to, to share case the work. So that has been one thing that is, it's really helped me and I, I highly advise people to do that because they also they always think that what I get from a lot of creatives is they think that the work is never good enough for blogs mm -hmm. and publications. But you honestly have no idea what the obviously the editor might love your illustration style, yeah. your branding tech, like whatever that project is. The audience might love it. Like you don't know unless you do it. The worst case scenario is to say no, right? I've had plenty of noise in my career, right? but you need to be persistent that way. In terms of business, it's making sure that um, cash flow is, is a big, big factor. So one thing that I've made sure is trying to keep my overhead as low as possible and, and as strict line as possible. So obviously I work at home, so I've not got a studio space where I rent out. So I've made sure that that's been a big factor for me. Um, but also making sure is a simple thing like, is when you're doing an invoice or you're working with a client and you've signed off the figures, like 50 percent deposit like right now like that is a big big thing the amount of things i hear creatives who do all the work and then expect a hundred percent invoice at the end and then they don't pay for six months like yeah. all right that is very frustrating but it's a wee bit of your fault as well for not being a business minded to get that deposit is i do not take on a project before and a deposit yeah. like that is i need to be kind to my my, my family because i can bounce to pay as well but it's, yeah. it's actually a bit more professionalism as well, because when you're working with a client and you're saying, give me basically this 50% deposit before I start working, um, then they go, all right, he's serious, right? I, okay, I'll work yeah. with him. I, I've never had any issue with a client who said that beforehand, like, oh, I've not got the money. Like, I've, if they've asked a red flag, if they come up, so I would say no right away, <laughs> but I've never had an issue. And maybe, so if it's not 50%, be flexible, especially with COVID times, because one thing with a client recently who not got the cash flow, so I did, um, what was it, four installments of 25%, but I staggered out the creative outcome of that, so I wouldn't do like the full project within the first 25%, so staging that time, so it would be like, first one would be 25%, four weeks later, 25% invoice, 
four weeks later, 25. And that, just small things like that do really help depending on the cash flow of a client. So try and be flexible that way, but 100% get that deposit in because cash flow is king. And if you've got no cash flow, then your business won't survive. Um, so that's probably been a big thing for me in, in making sure um, in terms of business aspects as well as being professional and how you come across on social media as well is a big, big thing. Because you working with brands, the amount of brands who have found me via Twitter or Instagram and stuff, like I don't sh- personally, I don't share my personal thoughts on things or not personal thoughts, but more about my personal life or like dinners and what I'm doing. Like all my accounts are very professional in terms of how my business is run. And that comes across as a, a professional manner. And that's been a hugely, hugely pivotal thing for me, uh, especially on LinkedIn. Like LinkedIn's been a huge driver for me. Um, but the big thing about it is people are connected with me, Craig Black, the brand as well, and my personality. But yeah. it doesn't mean I go and show who my fate, like personal stuff and all that. I just don't do it. And that's been a big, big change as well. And I'm seeing a lot of more creatives going on to LinkedIn and stopping that as well. And even on Twitter and Instagram, like they're cutting out all the, the nonsense and stuff. If you've got your showcase and a piece of work and then you've got uh, a picture of your dinner, like it's so unprofessional and it will put clients off and that's the brutal honesty of it. Um, and other personal learnings as well as um, business learnings is um, I had something in my head and it's totally went away. Um, that's because you're not thinking of dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're all starving, but mate. Recently, yeah. I, think, I think one thing as well is... Um, what I, I find this quite frustrating personally is when I recommend a designer on or an illustrator or another creative for a project and they say, oh, I'm too busy right now, but they don't know exactly when that project that I was recommending them for could be three months down the line. Like, I always believe that you should always think on the next project while you're yeah. doing, while you're busy right now. Yeah. So as much as I've released a typeface, whether I'm, I'm working on two other projects, I'm already connect, thinking about three months, four months, five months down the line, connecting with people, mm-hmm. trying to make sure things are rolling as they continue on. Because what I'm seeing is people are so focused on the now. So they've got one project and then they finish and then they go, oh shit, like what's the next project? Yeah. Like you've got, you've got to, unfortunately, because I'm a one man buy, I need to think business head, project management, accountant, designer. So I need to think all these things, marketeer, I need to think about all these things. So I'm always constantly thinking three, four months down the line, like how can I make something come in later, like for more work down the line, basically, even though I'm busy right now. And Such a good to, point is that the yeah. busier you are right now, yeah. the more you need to be looking for the future work because the busier yeah. you are right now, it means yeah. you're doing less of the promotion, less of the, the other stuff. It's, you know, so uh-huh. it's, it's really, I couldn't reiterate that as much. Yeah. That's a really and, important and point. That's, and I think that's why I'm fortunately done so, like, continued on through this time of COVID is because three, four months prior, prior to that, I was connecting with people, engaging with people who maybe have said, you know what, Craig, I've got a project that could maybe work for you but it might not be right now. And I'm like, great, let's stay in contact. And kid you not, like those projects have came in during this time. And I'm like, thank God that I, I had that business head on. And that has continued on. So that is a, that's been a big part of my business. Um, is always thinking three, four months down the line um, and trying to bigger and better each time. We've got a comment from Greg um, uh-huh. who has asked, what kind of business advice made the biggest impact on your creative career? Um, I would say that one I just shared that, <laughs> um, and, it, and it was probably came from you, Andrew, when we spoke in Barcelona. I remember, we sat um, and we had a few beers, and I was speaking about like kind of longevity of the business. Like, I, like this is my plan A. I don't have a plan B, so yeah. I need to make this work. And this is, and that drive and self belief is like. It's good, but I need to have that. But how do I actually maintain it? Put on getting money in the door, all those kind of things. And you always say to me, like, as much as you're busy right now, and how much is like you're the hot thing right now, you need to continue about marketing yourself three, four months down the line. Now, and another thing to just add to that in terms of case studies, uh, if you're showcasing a project, like one tweet isn't enough. Like, yeah, I see a lot of creators who think, oh, I'm just annoying people because I am showcasing my work over 10 tweets. I personally do not care. Like, I am a business. I am there to make 
continue my business on. If you don't like the, the tweets I'm putting out, then don't follow me. Do you know what I mean? But the flip side is that is not everyone is seeing your tweet. So maybe the 10th exactly. tweet that I've tweeted on my project, that client may be seeing that work. Now, if you've got a project, a case study, like filter that out over six pro, uh, posts on LinkedIn, do over 10 stories on Instagram, spread it out. Like I've just relaunched FS Renaissance. Like I've still got another two weeks worth of content to share. Yes, I will regurgitate the work that I've done, but that doesn't mean someone who, when I launched it last week, hasn't seen it in two weeks yeah. time. So, and also if you've already done work beforehand, say maybe you've done a project before like a year ago, bring it to life again, showcase it again. You don't have to highlight that you've done it last year. You can just say, this is a project that we have worked on, here it is here, because not everyone is seeing the work that you do. And, and I, I honestly, I do that consistently. And especially at a time where maybe you don't have a new project to launch, like think about the, per, the past projects and bring them to life again. The amount of things I do that, and people say, oh, I never knew you did that work. And I'm like, bingo, like, there you go. <laughs> uh, and that's the reality of it. It's it, it regurgitating that work, that case study, and, and bring it to life for people who have not seen it before. I think I think people often think that you know because you're and you've seen all that you're kind of boring people. But I you made such a, a great point is that someone might have been in their busiest week last week and they never went online at all. So you know if you you know just keep that keep that wheel of content coming and keep yeah. you know keep regurgitating it and bring it back out. And you can also obviously bring it to life as show reels. You can re bring yeah. it out as case studies. You can you can you can reiterate your case studies as well and kind of um, yeah. sort of you know make improve them as time goes on as well. So um, no great. Um, we have Lucy, um, who is saying, uh, delighted to hear there's a 60-40 split in business skills learnings. What about protecting your IP and assets? Do you assign or a, a, a license or license your work? Um, and she also loves the pipeline chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, this is a difficult one because every project is totally different. Um, for, for me, so for a typeface, for instance, the recent one, like, when I work with a, a brand, say I'm creating a brand typeface, there's certain licenses that can go with that. So there's one that could be an exclusive license. So that client buys the, the rights to use that license on as many computers as want, as many projects they want as much as possible. Um, but then that means it's much more expensive. And then there's other licenses as well. Like you can all, <sighs> try and make it a simple, like a five year license. So every five years they would have to renew that license. So maybe it's like a quarter of the fee of the exclusive license as well. So that's maybe one way of kind of protecting the, the IP of like, or a license of a font or a typeface even. In terms of a branding project, um, I personally believe if you're, everybody's got different views on this, but this is my view, is that when you're doing a branding project for someone and someone pays you that work, you'd have essentially created that work for them and how they want to distribute it and how they want to use it like that's how I, I don't get too hung up on saying like oh you kind of use it after five years not with a branding illustration is a totally different ball game and in, in terms of how that is distributed to, between is it on billboards is it on social media and there's different license fees with that and um, i i don't tend to go in that route too much i all if i'm ever going to do everything i'm always kind of exclusive license so they buy the outright because it, one, it's a more valuable content for me in, in, in terms of pricing uh, and proposal, uh, but also it gives a bit more clarity for the client because maybe if they want to use it a year down the line for a social media campaign, like I don't want to turn up on the doorstep and say, oh, by the way, since you used that, you owe me five grand for doing that. And people do that and that is totally fine and that's how they work. But for me, I've always pride myself in kind of giving the most value for the client as much as possible. Um, but it, it's different in every area that you go in, whether it's branding, packaging, illustrations, typefaces as well. And again, I am constantly learning about this as well. Like I'm not the be all and end all of IPs and license, but I do reach out to people who do know it. I speak to lawyers who are in this field and I always get their advice, getting the right contracts in place as well, reaching out to people. And that's okay. It's okay not to know everything. And I'm happy to share yeah. that. And there's been loads of people who I've tested over the years saying, what do you think of this? How do I do this? Like, what is the next step from here? How do I protect myself? And from that, I make sure that I learn from that experience as well. 
my wife's a massive help. Like she's got no idea. She's a mental health nurse. She doesn't know anything about design, but she's clued on. And uh, if anything happens like this, I bring her on board because she always reminds me to say, Craig, remember that happened last time. Uh, so you just make sure it doesn't happen again. So every time that I've maybe failed in business, I make sure I learn from that experience and it doesn't happen again. So hopefully that helped with that question a, a wee bit. <laughs> No, I think I think brilliant. I, I think that's actually a, a perfect uh, time to wrap up because we're six o'clock on the button. Bloody so hell. you've had an hour of therapy. That's what it always feels like after you read these talks, doesn't it? You just you get everything out. It's good, uh, and your your energy is very infectious, Craig. So you know we could sit here as usual for you know for hours upon end. Uh, you know yep. chatting through this stuff. Um, so I you know I just want to thank you personally for taking the time out of your kind of busy schedule to join us. Um, it's been a delight for everyone that's kind of joined to watch. Thank you so much for you know for coming and joining us um, for this session. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be um, saving these sessions down. We'll be placing them on, on um, Rachel's site, which is creativeentrepreneursclub.co.uk. We can also watch any past sessions that we've had. We'll also sh reshare this on the Made Brave channels and the Made Brave YouTube. Um, we've got another guest next week, the week after, Rachel, for this. In two weeks' time, two weeks' time, and the 30th, Tuesday 30th, two weeks today, five o'clock, life as a stand-up comedian. Ah, so, so cool. So if you, yeah, make sure and join us along for that. If you want to join those sessions, make sure you follow us and um, turn on notifications um, and let us know if you like this platform as well. You know, we've, we've kind of jumped over here. We were on Zoom previously and um, we're testing out LinkedIn Live to see how this works for everyone. Um, but yeah, thanks, Craig. You can now go off and get your dinner, take a picture of it, <laughs> and don't put it on your Instagram. <laughs> no, just, <laughs> no, just one, just one thing for the audience. If anyone's got any like kind of questions, I'm also doing a one-on-one -on -one session through Creative Entrepreneurs Club every Friday morning. Um, so you can go mm -hmm. onto the website, book a session with me. If anyone wants to speak in more detail or yeah, any questions at all, then book a session, and I'll be more than happy to help. And exactly. thanks for having me, for listening to me. Not at all, Thank not you. at all. Thank you, yeah. it's a pleasure. Great, right, thanks. I'm going, to, I'm, going to make, I'm going to go make some meatballs now. I've got. I've had meatballs in my head, so I'm going to make some homemade meatballs. <laughs> it's like when you <laughs> cheese and toast to someone, everyone goes uh, to make cheese and toast. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> going to have meatballs now. <laughs>